everybody, my name is Jenna and today I'm here with an adaptations discussion. The adaptation we're going to be discussing is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. So I'm going to make this as spoiler free as possible. There will be particular spoilers about like certain things that are in the film that aren't in the book or vice versa. So if you haven't read the book or seen the film and you want to, you can probably watch the majority of this video without being spoiled, but I can't 100% guarantee that there won't be little things that you might consider a spoiler. So first of all, we'll start off by talking about the book. Now the book is relatively short. It's hilarious. There are some very, very, very funny moments. There's some very funny moments. Moments. The characters are great. The plot is so random. Like it, when you're reading it, you're kind of like, how is this even a plot? Because it kind of isn't, but it's still really enjoyable. And overall, it is one of those fun comedic sort of books that you can pick up and read. It also does sort of read a little bit like a traveler's guide, which I know was sort of the idea that Douglas Adams was going with. So every now and then you do get these really random moments where you're like, that doesn't sound like it would need to be in a book, but all right, we'll just kind of go with it. And all in all, it is something that I did really enjoy reading. Moving on to the film. So I'm going to be talking in particular about the film that came out in 2005 starring Martin Freeman, uh, Zoe Deschanel and whoever plays all the other characters because I'm not entirely sure myself. So this film is the same sort of thing, follows along with the same characters, they do the same stuff, it's still kind of random, it's still sort of speaks and goes along as if it was a traveler's guide. It's kind of hard to explain without having actually seen the film because even watching the film you're sort of like what is happening? happening but all in all it's something that I do enjoy I just think it's not it was it was different re-watching it all these years later when I used to watch it when I was younger having not read the book I loved it I thought it was great now re-watching it I can see the flaws that it has and I can see the the sort of not great elements to this particular film so when I was watching the film I was writing down all the differences that I could think of so we're actually going to start with the similarities between the two first so there's a couple of similarities from the book to the film that I wanted to talk about and the biggest one is is that the majority of the plot and most of the characters are completely the same from the book to the movie and that's something obviously really important with adaptations you want the majority of the plot to be the same you might have some things to be extended on or things cut out depending on the source material but overall you really want the majority of the plot to stay the same majority of the characters and the character motivations you want all of that to remain the same and this in particular it has a lot of the same stuff a lot of the character motivations are the same it's just they have expanded on some things obviously to fill a full movie as opposed to the shorter story that we get in the book. Some of the lines in the script for the film are directly taken from lines in the book and there are particular sequences such as the sequence with the sperm whale that is exactly the same and nothing was changed. On the other hand there have been a lot of differences between the book and the film. The biggest difference of course is the fact that the book is so short and so straight to the point that the film has had to change certain things in order to create more of a cohesive storyline. So there's probably a good hour or so content in the film that is not in the book and I am going to go through some of those now so I guess this technically would be spoilers for the film. So some of the differences include there is a song at the very beginning of the film called So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. This song was mentioned in the book however in the film we actually get to see it which is something that I love. There are certain plot elements that do come up faster such as the introduction of Trillian and Arthur having met previously at a party. That is introduced much more quickly in the film than it is in the book. Also the story of the question and the computer comes up a lot more quickly in the film than it does in the book. In the book it comes up I think almost towards the end of the book whereas in the film it is one of the driving plot points and so it comes up much much faster. And then there are also a couple of subplots that just don't exist in the book. So one of those subplots is the subplot of the Vogans chasing the Heart of Gold. In the book the Vogans just kind of have their one moment and then when they're never seen from again whereas in the film they take on bigger roles as antagonists and they team up with the Vice Chancellor who is not even a character in the novel to track down Zaphod who is the president of the galaxy and they become become bigger antagonists who have a much bigger role. There is an entire subplot involving Hama Kavala, which is not in the book, an entire subplot where Trillian is taken by the Vogons, which is also not in the book. There is a point of view gun, which is not in the book, although I do believe that gun does show up in later Hitchhiker's Guide books, but I'm not 100% sure. And the whole ending of the film is basically completely different in how they solve their biggest issue. And I think the biggest thing with that is the fact that the book never really does, whereas 
whereas the film being that it is a movie sort of has to have that beginning that middle and that end. So if I had to pick between reading the book or watching the film as much as I love the actors in the film I actually think I would choose the book because so much of what was added into the film in my opinion was not particularly necessary and it honestly just made the film a lot more convoluted and difficult to follow rather than the book which read like a travel guide which the film tried to do as well but it works so much better in print form than it does in a screen media. The print form actually can do things like it can have footnotes, it can really make it very clear that you're now reading part of the travel guide as opposed to reading the full story. That's something that I think worked really well. The voice in this worked well, the voice in this one did not. So if you could only do one I would recommend reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book instead of watching the 2005 movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you have read this book or seen this film and which one you would choose because I would absolutely love to know. If you like this video be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Stay random. Bye. Thank you.